Hey guys, 65 Ford here. You're probably clicking on the video because your EU2000i Honda generator isn't working right. So let me give you a quick overview of how to do a good thorough carb cleaning. Once you take the cover off, you'll have two 8mm bolts here. And then take off your air filter, which is right under here, and under the secondary part. And then this assembly pulls off, there's a little hose. Come on. We'll leave it attached for now. It's stiff. Come on. And we'll just leave it attached, but the hose just pulls off if you want. A little gasket. These are reusable. They're not bad as long as they didn't rip up and stick and rip in half when you went to pull them off. And generally the way you remember how they go back is just look at the indentations. There's a little dot right there and a little dot right there. So that's going to go back like that. Set that aside. Now the carb. You're going to have a, um, a, you know, if you don't know how to drain the bowl of your carburetor and you should do it after you're using it then the season, there's a little flathead screw right here um, and it'll drain the fuel out this little hose down and out the bottom and this one right here is just a fuel overflow if the fuel got too high or you tipped it or something like that instead of flooding the engine it'll flood out the side um, so remove the fuel inlet and let's remove these hoses are connected down here come on I want to remove this So you guys can see better. There we go. So these hoses are just connected down here and they just go right down to the ground. So we'll pull those off. This one's connected just to nothing. This is more of just a vent on this side. And the whole carburetor comes off. And this one does not have a um, like a governor linkage like most of these carbs would have. If you don't know what that is, um, good. You don't have to do this very often. It's all electronic. But let's pull the gasket back off. Let's put it right back on how it was. So we'll just unscrew it. But you need to, there's a spring and stuff under here. You need to see how it's set up in there. There's just two Phillips screws. But there's a spring right here. And once you pull that up, it's just going to fly. It kind of stayed on right here. And it just keeps the throttle, like evens out the throttle. So I'll pull that up. This whole thing just slides in this little, I don't know if you can see this. But it slides in this little groove right in there. And the spring just goes on the tip. And I just dropped it down there. I'll grab it. But it just slides right in that little pocket. But remove that. Now we can rebuild the carb. There's my spring. Okay, if the outside of your carburetor is filthy, the first thing I do is I put my thumb over the front and the back. And I spray off the whole outside. This is actually a machine that has less than like two hours or so when it's already acting up. But um, what we're going to use is just general purpose carburetor cleaner for the whole thing. So let's take off the bowl first. I'm going to close the butterfly so I don't damage it. Put it down, 10 millimeter bolt. And the bowl will come off. The bowl nut. That actually looks really clean. I'm sure I just have a minor, minor blockage. Okay, this is your float. So we're going to remove that. There's just a little pin that slides out. Slide out your pin, and it'll pull out the needle with it, a little rubber tipped. Um, I really don't, and there's a little spring on there. I really don't like spraying that with carburetor cleaner because 
it's acetone. Carbo cleaner, carburetor cleaner is pretty much just acetone, and it'll dissolve plastics and stuff like that. Some plastics. These plastics are really resilient. They're meant to be fueling fuel resistant and everything but sometimes the rubber the acetone doesn't like it okay you got your main jet up in here we're gonna remove that I'm gonna make sure I have a really good screwdriver um, something with a, a really good brand new tip um, to remove this once you strip it leave it there's nothing you can do about it we're gonna pull out our main jet right here and all your main jet is is a little teeny hole that's it and I can tell there's a little bit of green corrosion on it so I'm going to spray it out with carburetor cleaner but I'm also going to use copper wire I don't like steel wire I don't like wire from like a metal brush because it'll actually um, scratch the soft brass and enlarge it copper is soft copper won't so I'm going to take a stranded copper wire I split off a piece or so. Um, if it's bent and wavy that's even better because that kind of goes in there and rubs all the sides. And I'm just going to make sure that thing's clear. And I love carburetor cleaner over compressed air because carburetor cleaner I can actually see what it's doing. You know compressed air if I spray compressed air through there I can't see what it's doing. I can't see a stream. This actually you know gives me a good visual stream of what that jet's doing. Looks great. Spray out the whole inside. Let's try not to spray the little rubber gasket around there too much either, the little O-ring, because it will swell up. And if it does swell up on you, if you just let it sit, it will shrink back down. Okay. Um, just a little bit of debris is the reason why that one's probably running a little rough. But we're going to... Oh, there goes our emulsion tube. Our emulsion tube is up there too. I was getting to get to that next. But your emulsion tube... Um, sticks up just barely right in the middle of your carb and a lot of times you can just push it down pop it down and out comes your emulsion tube and what this does is there's a bunch of little air passages around the outside so air gets pulled in and gas goes through the middle and it blends the air and fuel and the way we test this is spray through it should be hollow all the way through but then we'll plug off the end and there's a million little holes all the way around the outside. Just make sure they're all clean and clear. And then same thing, if one's not, you can use copper wire to go through them. Okay, that's good. Set that aside. Now, we're going to come up here to the, uh, the idle passage. And it sits them. So, these have a uh, fixed idle screw that allows you to only make that much of a turn. They don't want you adjusting it any more than that. If you want to remove this idle screw, um, there's a little spring there. You can actually heat that up, pull it off, but you're using open flame. Or, a lot of times I like just to take some side cutters and just nip it off if I feel that it's necessary to remove it. And lets me show you when it's necessary and when it's not. So, you got a, a passage, you got at the very front of your carburetor, there's a couple air passages. Here's one right here. And I'm going to spray through this. And what this does is this goes straight back along through a little welch plug behind here. Um, and then just sprays out two little teeny holes right on the inside right there. And then your one with the screw in it. And you can see the one with a screw in it. That's flowing really good. I don't need to remove that screw. Now, if I was spraying through there and I wasn't getting anything or was spraying, you know, diagonal or something, just really not giving me a good steady stream, then I would know that that's clogged and I may have to remove that. Um, you can try just, if it is, you can try just moving it back and forth a little bit. But this sits up high on the carburetor, so most of the time gas doesn't sit there and gum it up. It'll fall down into the lower part. Usually the lower part of the carburetor is clogged more than the upper. 